everybody. Welcome to Lord Duncan's Rock and World Food Chat. This week we have got a special celebrity guest from the show One Bar Lumpigus. We've got Mr. Lumpigus himself. So let's bring him on here any second. Once he pops up, I'll have him up for you. Live, no. No, we are back. We got Mr. Lumpigus here for my first ever celebrity guest. <laughs> I don't go that far. My old co-worker David from, from Denver, uh, just doesn't cut it, even though he does look like Gil Birmingham, the the uh, the actor who plays uh, the head Indian chief on Yellowstone. But either way, we got him here himself. So today, uh, I guess I'll just start. I made a list of questions for you. All right, can't wait. To keep it somewhat kind of. Uh... Oh wait, first of all, more importantly, cheers to you, my brother. Cheers to you, Lord Duncan. Old, I, I should be drinking that because that's technically the the Minnesota Vikings beer. I wish they would. It is. To if they switch it to Bud Light, would you go to Bud Light or no? Uh, no, I actually started drinking light because I, here's a funny story. So I stayed away from Miller Light for like 20 years. Uh, when I was in my early 20s, I got a really bad hangover from it, and it lasted like three days. So I like stayed away from it forever. Finally went back to it. Uh, Miller High Life Light was out there, and they quit making that. And then so I go to my brother-in-law's, go to my friend Joe's, my father-in-law's. They all drink Miller Light, so I'm like, okay, fine. I'll start drinking Miller Light too. Sure. It's yeah, fine. just, just uh, can't beat them, join them, that type of deal, yeah. Kind of thing, yeah. I was kind of a Mick Golden Light guy when it came to beer. Oh, yeah. Uh, I also enjoyed Captain that. Morgan, but Captain Morgan had to wake up uh, naked and unsure of what happened the night before. <laughs> yeah, well, I gave up gin in 91 uh, when I fell back on a friend's real Christmas tree, <laughs> thus knocking over his girlfriend's entire Precious Moments collection that she'd been saving her entire life. And a branch <laughs> of the tree snapped off. Put a big gouge in my back, and I bled all over their very light-colored cream carpet as well. Mary, so I back then. <laughs> Merry fucking Christmas to that one. Uh, oh, yes. How many did you break? <laughs> oh God, probably over a dozen. <laughs> the twenty bucks I gave him obviously didn't cover probably no. even one of them. My wife collects those uh, cherished teddies. I get one every Christmas, and I God, if I if I broke those, I would be dead meat. Yeah. Well, luckily. I, I I guess they 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 uh, forgave me. Then again, I haven't heard a word from them ever since. So maybe not. <laughs> Ninety one, you drinking gin? I didn't think you're that old. Well, I'm fifty three now. So are you really? I was drinking gin back in ninety ninety one, just because it was it was uh, Joey Ramone's favorite drink. You know the okay. song. Somebody put something in my drink. I okay. don't want anything colored pink. Tang right. tonic is my favorite drink. Nice. Anyways. My problem is I uh, when I went to Augsburg College of Minneapolis in 88, 89, living in a co-ed dorm, by the way, Ooh. Uh, I did very well with the ladies that year. I bet you and, did. Uh, I'll never match that year. And, uh, yeah, I learned kind of how to guzzle a little bit. So when you guzzle uh, gin and tonic, bad things happen. Uh, so a, a buddy of mine, or actually, I don't know, they, they make a drink called a, a gin buck. You ever have a gin buck? I don't know if I have. I'm not even sure what the hell's in a gym box. <coughs> well, there's a the damn Daisy. puppy. Hi, Daisy. Hello, Daisy. What a dog. On now. A, a shelter dog from Houston. Okay, so, uh, so where are you from originally? Are you originally from Minnesota? Yeah, born and raised in Two Harbors, Minnesota. And you know, it seemed like half of us would leave, half of us would stay. And I, you know, I love the area. We were right on Lake Superior. It's beautiful. So. Uh, and I, I don't like the big city, so I came back. Well, I didn't know you were just uh, west of me. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. I'm up in Cross Lake, just uh, north of Brainerd. So. Well, I found that out when I had to mail you that uh, lumberjack. Oh, there you go. That's right. <laughs> it, it was it was the mailman had that box shoved in there, just big enough for my little mailbox, but it fit. Mm -hmm. uh, They'll shove anything in mailboxes. It's I crazy because I live on the highway, so like they don't want to drive up my long driveway to get to my house, so they'll shove. The shit they can get in a mailbox is actually pretty impressive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because of mine, they'd have to drive out over my house instead of leaving it like a quarter of a mile from the house. But uh, Do you get the bags mile. that they just put the bags on, like, on your on your fucking mailbox post? Yeah. Uh, the only time they come to my house is if I order a record. The mailman's like, I can't crumple that in there. <laughs> and I usually leave, if I order a couple of old used records off of eBay, I usually leave them like five bucks or something for having to get yeah. off his ass and walk all the way off out of his truck and then up to my house from their driveway. So yeah, I hear you. I hear you which is that. pretty righteous of him. But uh so uh okay well I, I actually uh 
I was born in California for a year, lived in Arizona, Prescott for a year. My parents were both teachers starting out back in the day. Really? But even as my dad was an English teacher, my mom was a music teacher, back in the early 70s, kids were already, they were teaching in, in L.A. or East L.A. and uh, the P- Pomona, Fontana area. And back then, kids were already uh, stabbing each other in school. So they said, no, let's not do this. Let's go back to Minnesota where family's at as well, where, yeah. you, can get free, where you can get free babysitting as well. And mm-hmm. uh, moved around a lot as a kid because my dad became a school administrator. And my mom was always a music teacher. Last three years were in Olivia, which is a giant corn cob, the Minnesota's corn capital of the state. Okay. In fact, our old, our old governor, I believe her name was Mary Page, at one point she referred to Olivia as that corn cob as the prairie penis of the, or the, yeah, the prairie penis. And I think she actually got, she did not get reelected after that phrase. <laughs> anyway, come, she she would have earned my vote with that. There you go. All right. Well, this is back in the late eighties though, still. So people are still all uptight about everything. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, they're not my they're mom taking away, now. I don't know if you remember that. It was an episode of uh, Rolling Stone that had a lot of very produ- provocative underwear ads in it. Mm. it super hot women with, with, uh, with clothing that was not big enough to hardly even cover any of their giant melons. But I remember <laughs> my mom thinking, I don't think he needs this episode of it. I'm like, uh, Mom, I've already seen Dad's collection of Playboys from the from the 70s, so I think I'm okay with this thing. Anyway, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe had a hustler or two in there too. Yeah, I don't know. He always just had Playboy. In fact, you know, he used to have he he finally sold the original Playboy that had Marilyn Monroe on it. I think he got a really? pretty, pretty pretty penny for it too. Yeah, it's because he's a scholar. That's why. There you go. He is actually mm-hmm. actually just just finishing up his uh, eighth or ninth novel right now, which you can for a little free plug for Marty Marty Duncan at Amazon Books at Marty Duncan. There you go. What's he write? Uh, he's written a, a three book trilogy about the Civil War. It's uh, it's fictional. It's historical fiction, basically. Yeah. He, he uses stuff about real people, then he kind of ad libs shit in between to, to make it a little more interesting. Uh, right now, he just finished up another trilogy about the Anunnaki mm. uh, people who I guess were here yeah. way before. I'm, I'm familiar. So there you go. And uh, I'm trying to get through the first book of it. Uh, and uh, so there you go for that. But uh, I actually, uh, I have, I'm a chapter in, I'm writing some Sasquatch erotica. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's called I'll The Beast Inside Me. Very nice, dude. And then, and then you know you can have the uh, you can tie your book along with the the lumberjack, get them all tied into one. You know, absolutely. If you need to yep. shave your if you need to shave your neighborhood squatch, there you go. Uh, well, there you go. I have wanted to try that Doctor Squatch bar soap. Have you tried that yet? I got some right now. Yeah, but you know, but I only use Happy Nuts. Uh, okay, okay. There you go. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's it's the big wood. Con- conflict of interest, otherwise, right? <laughs> Okay, how about uh, move this to something different? Uh, yeah. What's some of your favorite music or any any favorite concerts you've been to? Or yeah, any, no. Uh, so musically, uh, music big part. I'm always constantly listening to music. Some of my favorite bands right now. Uh, big. T- okay, so I'm gonna go back. So like when I first started getting into music, it was the '80s hair bands like Motley Crue, Bon Jovi, Poison. Oh, yeah. Loved all that shit. Then it kind of evolved into. I was big in the Headbangers Ball. Remember Headbangers Ball? Ricky Rackman. Every uh, Saturday Pantera. night. At some parties at the U of M on Saturdays. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Pantera. I love Vulgar Display of Power. Uh, really got heavy into that shit. Then it kind of evolved into punk rock. Um, big, you know, Green Day, Screeching Weasel, um, Down by Law, Pennywise, all that kind of stuff. Like and uh, bad, bad religion. Bad religion. Food. Rancid. Bad I mean, keep going. That was my that was my thing, and now, uh, like Gaslight Anthem is one of my favorite bands, and now I kind of go after lead singers. So, uh, like Brian Fallon's has some solo shit. Dave Haas is a great guy. I love his music. Uh, so yeah, uh, kind of I'm kind of actually uh, I call myself a punk rocker at heart. But I listen to everything really. I listen. I just there's for a long time I'd shut myself off to different genres of music, but you can you can find good songs in in country, rap, wherever. I, I try to listen to everything I can. Sure. Um, but the most recent concerts I've been to, uh, Dropkick Murphys were here in Duluth. That's right. Last I, saw, October. I, was je- I was jealous. One bar had that sweet, yeah. sweet and I couldn't find the merch table. Like, where the hell? I didn't see a oh. merch table anywhere. I was, we were drinking though. He wasn't drinking very much that night, so I couldn't find it. Um, let's see. That was the last one I was at. Uh, before that, I went to Dave Haas at uh, First Ave, the 7th Street exit, 
entry, that tiny little, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's just a tiny little venue. Super cool. Nice. It's like super intimate. Like you're really close up front. It's just this tiny little spot. It was absolutely yeah, was fantastic. The very first Reverend Horton Heat show was there in 90. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't even, uh, they served us even though it was only 20. <laughs> well, you're already having gin at a young age as well. Um, yeah. So that was um, a couple of my last ones. I've seen Gaslight like three times. I used to go to Warp Tours a lot. Uh, my first concert ever was 311. Uh, we saw nice. 311. And I think Sugar Ray opened up, and me, it was, I was like probably 16, 17. We drank like a half a case of MGD on the way down, smoking weed in the back behind a curtain during the show. It was it was fucking wild, but uh, yeah, that, uh, three the the three eleven stands for KKK. Did it? Was that was that the rumor? I'll have the controls in the streamer. Like you can only have one person. Oh shit, you're recording. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. No worries. Let's go keep I was it. Gonna say like. Uh, yeah, so I've had like an almond in my throat during a live show. I'm like, oh, right, yeah, that happened during my uh, the same thing happened during my my second live video where I was not live but recorded video where I was getting my hair cut. Yeah, all of a sudden I started gagging and getting lightheaded and uh, kind of nauseous because it was all fucking hot in there from this little heater. But yeah, anyways, all right, my apologies, folks. Uh, I had I had a gag flex to uh. I guess pounded his first beer of the day a little too quick trying to get in, in the swing of things. But uh, so my apologies, folks. I guess I could have kept all that private, but what the hell? I'm, I'm, I keep it real. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite concert of all time, I was lucky enough to be old enough to go to see U2, Joshua Tree in 87. Nice. Uh, 25th row. for, and, and I think the tickets were only 40, 40 bucks, which is a lot back then for a concert. Um, saw the Grateful Dead a bunch of times in my early 20s. So, yes, I know what it's like to uh, see funny things in different colors. Uh, who do you think is the best band from the 70s, 80s, and 90s? Just pick one or two bands in each era. Uh, okay, the well, 70s a little... Is well, they don't have to be the best, or maybe your favorite of those of those three decades. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can really answer 70s, because that was just a little before my time. Sure. Uh, 80s for me it was Bon Jovi. I was a huge Bon Jovi buff. I mean, I yeah. love Bon Jovi. New Jersey is like my favorite albums of all time. Uh, Poison is a close second. They're my two favorites in the 80s. Uh, 90s, I guess you look at the whole. Oh, shit, I gotta go. Alice in... I gotta go. Alice and Change. For yeah, me. I don't. That's a, that's a good answer. And I'm trying to think. Okay, 90s. I gotta go Pearl Jam because Pearl Jam. I was oh, just yeah. a diehard Pearl Jam. You know what? They were that. They they definitely own that whole decade. Whereas yeah, I and they were. Led Zeppelin and the Stones were for the seventies, I would say. Yeah, in my, yeah. In my Pearl Jam eyes. was was huge. I mean, I was I was writing Pearl Jam on my folders in, in sixth grade. Uh, uh, I you, love you Pearl see Jam. Him live? You see him live? I've not all? seen Pearl Jam live. That's one band I have not yet seen. See, you know, I've actually never seen him either. I wasn't really into him at the time, but God, at one point, I was working when I was delivering pizza in between jobs. This young oh, kid I deliver worked, pizza too. I, there you go. Dude, What'd you do a it fun for? Job. I thought it was fun. I did it for blackjack. Pizza out in Denver. Oh, I was making pretty good money. And then at one point, I actually had a day gig where I was going in at like eight, I was working like eight to four. And yeah. I was delivering pizza to the Denver public schools for like the first half of my day. And I was getting a percentage out of each delivery because you had to deliver like 300 pies, these little, these little mini ones yeah. with the freaking non fat cheese and the yeah. freaking turkey sausage, which I'm sure tasted horrible. Yeah. But uh, so I was getting a commission out of it. So I was making like, 50 bucks before noon in my commission. And then the rest of the afternoon, I would just do regular house deliveries. Dude, I love that. That was a slackish job ever. We go and ride. One bar worked there too. We worked at Pizza Hut here in Two Harbors. We do ride alongs. It was fucking crazy. I loved it. And then we'd also, uh, there was a trick. If someone didn't have a coupon, you throw a coupon on it, uh, give them the original receipt, you get an extra four bucks uh, if it was a good coupon on top of the you know whatever tip you get. So couponing was a big thing as well. Well, I, and I used to do the old uh, peppers and cheese in my pocket, right? But uh, when they what? pay me, and if, if if I don't get a tip, oh, you're not getting your peppers and cheese packets. <laughs> or if they were cheap, and they're, they're like, oh, here you go. I give you like 50 cents, keep the change. Yeah. Because they think that $3 delivery fee actually goes to us, which it never did. It always went to, uh, actually, we got $1 out of the $3, and the rest would go to the pay for the boxes and the little flyers. But, when you uh, drove your own car, I bet. Drive my own car. Yeah. And I, if I had to go a long ways to get there, and they were cheap on the tip, 
I would say, oh, let me go look at my car for something. I would just drive away. <laughs> yeah, we had one guy every single Thursday as soon as delivery, which was four o'clock. He would he would order every Thursday, never tipped. God. Yep, every we had the same thing with a guy who would call from the yellow cabs place, but he was a dispatcher, not a driver. But still, you'd think somebody in a cab company would know you need to freaking tip your drivers. Yeah, this guy would order, and it was always during rush hour, and it was the it was like the very end of our freaking of our whole giant freaking grid. So it was a pain in the ass to get there with a railroad track you have to wait for at that time of day. And finally, after the third time with no tipping, when he called back in, the dispatcher's like, nope, we're not delivering you guys anymore. Adios. Nice. Yep. The worst was like going to hotels and people be like, oh, over here, pizza. And you yeah. walk over there and then they're like, oh, no, it's not for me. I'm like, it just, I mean, it's not yeah. funny. You know how many times I, I you ever, see that? I get somebody in the lobby like, oh, yeah, that's for us. And then they pay for it. And then the real people call back and they're like, hey, we never got our shit. And I'm like, oh, at least crap. they paid for it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I remember once I was in the elevator at a hotel going up to the second floor and I was in there with somebody and I'm, I'm holding the fucking pizza and I just know they're sitting there. They're like sweating. They're like, and I know what they're going to say. And I'm, I'm like, come on, just do it. And they also just go, pizza. And I'm like, <laughs> you feel better now? I mean, what the fuck? Why does it no. have to be comment on? It's just pizza delivery. But they, right. I can just see it on their face. They were sweating. They're like intense. Do you ever get oh. jacked or robbed? No, I never did. It, it's not up here. It's I made a mistake. I was doing this in Denver and uh, in a certain part of town, with which had certain minority there. But uh, yeah. leave it at that. And I made a mistake of leaving my driver window down or the door unlocked with some two liters sitting there. Mm -hmm. I remember I got back and all those two liters had been jacked from the yep. neighbor next door. I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> I had to stop at a 7-Eleven and buy a two liter so I didn't have to go all the way back to the store to get one. I just had to use my own right. money to get one so I could get right. the next guy his soda. But, well, that's that's cool. Yeah, it's always a fun job, with you, especially if you can smoke in your car and everything else. I loved it. It was which great. I, which I did give up a couple years ago. I gained smoking up a couple years ago. But Good uh, for you, man. Which is why I gained fucking like 40 pounds, but whatever. We're, we're working on it. Doesn't show. Ah, thank you. Um, well, it helps when I grew my beard back because remember when I had my, my sideburns, you could see my double chin pretty bad. So that's why I grew the beard back. The thing does look nice and groomed. It's it's getting there. Yeah. Uh, Using that lumberjack. That's right. Favorite food or junk food? I, I'm a big chip guy. Uh, I love chips, and and actually, as I've gotten older, I prefer just like a regular, like just just the normal chip. I don't need all that shit on it. Uh, I don't know if you have a Costco around you, but there's just the Kettle brand chips. Uh, you can get them at Costco. No, these would be like in Super Ones, but now they're in Costco. The big, yeah. lightly salted. Those are the best damn chips oh, you can get. Like, in the, are, they, are they baked? They, yeah, and they last. I don't know if they're baked, but they last forever. Like they last. Forever, you know, usually like you get a bag of chips and you open it up and there's like, where the hell are all the chips? This one is just, you can pull and pull and pull and pull and it, I think they last you about three weeks, but they're in there nice. fantastic. Lightly salted, kettle brand chips. Yeah, Costco, I've had so those. It's Kirkland, they bought them, but it's yeah, that's like, what you're going to yeah, The salt and vinegar one, which is yeah. kind of freaky to some people, but I like it's that. Weird. Well, I know, it's like... Weird. Well, the good thing about that is like you can't just like scarf. I think you kind of have to eat them at a good yeah, pace. It makes you go. Yeah, you, you're not going to sit there and eat half the freaking bag, you know. And you're also like giving your mouth a douche, which I think oh, is good. That's true. It, it douches douches your your uh, your palate. <laughs> it does douche. It douches your palate. Hashtag douche your palate in the comments. There you go. Well, I'm, I'm into chips, but I guess I prefer pretzels more, which is really probably even more fattening than chips, but. Because all it is is bread, but I guess the chips are oily and when depending on how if they're baked or fried. But yeah, I guess yeah. I'm a pretzel dude. I like those ones that are stuffed with peanut butter inside of them. Oh yeah, yeah you ever had nice. those? It's like right. a it's like a combo only it's a pretzel with peanut butter. Either way, it's like a fancy combo. What, what, speaking dad, of combos, what was your favorite flavor of combos? Pizza, probably the pizza one, I guess. Yeah. No, I know there's probably I think there's a baked potato one. I forget. And there was just like cheese, right? Like nacho cheese or something. Yeah, I, I like the petite pizza one more than the nacho cheese. Oh yeah, me too. And I'll go with uh, ranch bugles over cheese bugles. <laughs> like, what would ever well, possess you to have to eat a bugle, though? What's that? Why would you ever have to eat a bugle? That's true. There's other shit to get. Even a fun. I, have, I think I'd rather have a corn nut than a bugle. Do you remember that commercial they had back in the '90s? Bust a nut. Bust a nut. <laughs> Yeah, for corn nuts. 
Yeah, there was a it was a radio ad. Bust a nut, just bust a nut. The corn nuts, yeah, it was. I, there was, a, I think, it was my junior year. There was like corn nuts were all the rage, and um, just for a couple of months. So I was on a corn nuts kick there for a while. Dude, bust a molar, lose a filling. <laughs> douche your mouth or <laughs> douche right. your palate. Any dream vacations you've had, or any looking to go to, or any any location that you'd love to go if you could just go there for like two weeks and just get away from it all. Yeah, you know, I guess I, I would love to go to Hawaii at some point. I think that would be nice. Sure. Um, I've done Florida, but I think Hawaii would be something special. The other thing would be like just out in the, you know, Northwoods. I honestly would love to go squatching, like on an expedition. I think that would be fucking amazing. Uh, way up there in the Northwest, Washington area. Sure. I would love to go on a squatching expedition. It would be fantastic. Dude, have you seen that show, Expedition Bigfoot? They had a yeah, couple I, episodes where they got this heat signature, and yeah. it's the size of a squatch, dude. And then mm-hmm. they got eye shine in the back, in the back where, and the eyes are they're far apart, like on the size of a basketball. So it's not a freaking raccoon. No, and it's like freaking twelve feet in the air. So it's got to be a squatch. Yeah. And then there was another episode where they actually had a heat signature, the shape of a squatch, and it's walking away. And then all of a sudden, it just dissipates. Yeah. Which is proves, proves my theory why. You, they're never here 24 7. I think they're from like another dimension yeah. or some kind of ghost or spirit or some kind of time traveler. No joke. No, I've heard those theories as well, but I, I, there's so much evidence that they're there. They're out there. I, you know, when, I, when we went camping across Canada, like in, early, in the early 80s, in a van and a tent. And uh, of course, my mom and sister got to sleep in the van because me and my dad snored. So we were stuck in the tent. Yep. But uh, when all across Canada from Straight up from Minnesota to Winnipeg the first night, and then all the way over to the West Coast, Vancouver and British Columbia. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a few times I go walking in the woods, and I would hear some thuds, like something dropped, mm-hmm. like it could have been a, something throwing a rock at me. Yep. And I do remember hearing some actual wood banging too. So it was called wood knocks. At the time I didn't know it. You know that was probably a squash. Oh, yeah, they're out there for yeah. sure. I guarantee it. I did. I even had a, a gone squatching hat when I first started watching. Uh, Finding Bigfoot. That goofy show with the four people that had Finding Bigfoot. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was hooked on that for a while. Oh yeah, um, I love that. Gone, okay, it's your turn to, to yell in the woods so that we can pretend we hear one. Bobo's just like they did one up in Kettle River here in oh, Minnesota, gosh. and Bobo got bit so bad by mosquitoes he was just pissed. Right, right. I remember. I <laughs> that was pretty hilarious. Okay, how about? Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. What's your next Vikings or Twins jersey? Uh, it would be Vikings, and um, I always like to go a little bit deeper. I don't like to get you know the Jeffersons or I once had right. a Thomas DePay jersey that didn't pan out uh, going that deep because he only lasted here about a year. Um, you know, so and I played fullback in high school, and I played some guard, I played some tight end. So I would probably go with a Hawkinson or maybe a Darissa, something a little deeper cut. Sure. I did the same thing. My last two, the first, most recent, most recent was Daniil Hunter, because that's sort of not yep. that common. And then before that, Anthony Barr. Yep. So just because everybody and their brother has cousins or uh, Davin Jefferson Cook, or, you know, Diggs or Thielen or Bridgewater. You still have a ton of Bridgewaters out there. Right. Well, remember that cat on your show was like, we got to keep cousins because we just got three brand new cousins jerseys. <laughs> I hate to tell you, but he ain't playing for him this year, Bubba. I, I said my daughter every time she gets a jersey, they're gone the next year. So yep. um, she well, just got to buy them. Hopefully, he's not tell gone. One, bar, one bar needs to buy a cousins one to help him. Sure, it happens then. All right. Yeah, uh, all right. Let's see. Let's, uh, you, you like the twins at all? Uh, I I do, and and so like actually, weird story. So growing up. Uh, baseball was my thing. Like I was a huge baseball guy. I was constantly playing baseball. Uh, in the summers, we're outside just doing everything we did was pretty much revolved around baseball. But the team we could watch was the Cubs because they were on WGN and we had that. So I was a huge oh, Cub. Man. I love the Cubs. And it was great because Harry Carey was on there. He'd be shit faced by yep. the third inning. Then he had go leave. He'd come back in the seventh and he was super shit face when he had return him and Steve Stone. I mean, Andre Dawson, Ryan Sandberg, Rhino was my favorite player. Uh, second baseman, Mark Grace, uh, Sean Dunstan. Those are, I mean, that's what I grew up on, but uh, I do like the twins 87, 91. I remember those uh, world series. Again, I was pretty young. I was seven and 11. 
And during the 91 one, I just got my Super Nintendo. So I was a little preoccupied. Uh, but I do remember, um, you know, waking up and then, then winning it all. And uh, again, just not really realizing how rare that is and how much that should be appreciated. Right, right. I just got to open this window real quick. Yeah. I, uh, of course, was a little bit older, so I uh, I was in high school when the 87 happened. Uh, I was right in the middle of a, in, in a singing a pop singer's concert at a place called the Sheep Shed in Olivia where, they, where we performed live to the You hotel. can sing? And uh, they were giving us announcements of the Twin Cities. It's like, of all the nights we had to have a concert yeah. while the World, World Series is on, but I remember we all cheered when they won that night. But uh, so Kent Herbert's my favorite player for that. Yeah. And uh, going back to uh, Cubbies, I was a big Andre Dawson fan. So. Yeah, yeah. And I loved what Andre Dawson. He kept his shoes from the Expos, like those light blue shoes. That's hilarious. It is. He's like, these are my shoes. I'm not gonna get the dark blue. Hey, man, these hey, light blue. He might have grown up poor. You know, you keep everything, you, everything you get your hands on. The Hawk, Andre Dawson. He was a badass too. I, I, yep, I did like Dale Strawberry too as well. Even though my yep. my grandpa hated him because of the whole cocaine thing, but uh, I always thought he was still kind of a badass anyway. <laughs> Imagine being on that plane, the '86 Mets. Oh, it was like a scene from a movie Wall Street with uh, with naked women everywhere and people doing lines off of butt cracks and everything else. Good for them. Awesome. Good for them. Playing baseball while hungover and shit. Talk yeah. about pain. Okay, uh, just a couple more questions, and then we'll have you on your way. Uh, you guys, play, how about uh, golf or bowling? Uh, both, uh, actually. So I actually went to school. Well, I went to. I was actually I was a funeral director for like seventeen years. So I went to Mortuary Science wow. School in in Cincinnati, Ohio. There's a, a a specialty school out there, and we bowled like every single Wednesday. Like that was the thing. So I bowled a lot there. Uh, but I recently like hurt my like, I don't know, my muscle right in here, bowling. I, I can't show. I can't find the camera. Uh, bowling. We bowled a couple weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, two, three months ago. It was around Christmas time. I, something popped. Fucked up my arm. Uh, but right now, it's golf. I mean, I, I golf as much as I can. My sons are into it. Uh, my daughter likes to do it. My wife can be talked into it. Um, scrambles. I golf with you know one bar and our buddy Sneaky Joe a lot as well. So golf is probably my uh, favorite of the two. Cool. I hear you. I'm the same way. I, my uh, grandpa was a stud golfer who had trophies. My my mm-hmm. uncle was a stud. He actually may still have the course record at Hazeltine. Mm. Uh, he got two holes in one in that round. It was something ridiculously low, like a 59 or something or a 58. Yeah, um, I'm fucking horrible. I'm. If I play a good 10 rounds, I can get into the the mid 80s. Uh, mid to high 80s, like like I think the best I ever shot was a 42 on a nine hole, and then I yeah. think I got 40, 42 to 44 of my best rounds ever. But well, you better so mean I a par here and there, but I'm but I'm double bogeying it most of the time. I've yet to sniff the 40s. I, I'm usually like a I'm a low 50 guy at best. Well, that's that's about me as well because I'm honest. Well, there you go. If if I play with my buddy Bobby Eichens or, or Cleats or Cletus, we call him. <laughs> We, uh, you don't get anything less than a double bogey at every hole. <laughs> yeah, I play with my brother. Uh, we, we or did if, a it's, of if it's four feet, pick it up. That's a gimme. Yeah, we got a cabin over in Wisconsin, so we've done some courses around our cabin, and we're golfing with them. And I've seen him literally take, like, I mean, with penalty strokes, probably 20 strokes. And he's like, what'd you get? He's like, I got a six. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Add a zero to that, and you're probably closer, but whatever. Right, right. right. That's hilarious. Very nice. Well, uh. You ever get a hole in one? No, no, no. Uh, My mom got one once, and uh, it was a pinnacle golf ball, so she sent it into them, and then they sent it back on this mounted trophy and everything, which is pretty nice. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yep. No, I haven't even probably like six feet from the pin was probably the closest I've ever been. There you go. I, I've uh, I've got an eagle on a par five, just my third shot. The ground is hard enough, and it rolled in for to get a three on a five. That's probably my biggest thing. You know what yeah. it's called if you get something better than a frick? If you got like a two on a par five, You're like an albatross. That's right, good old albatross. That's freaking sick. That's the Nintendo Golf. I think taught me that. 
Oh, okay, okay. I just learned that like a few years ago, but either way, I also just figured out what uh, what all these years when I would see the word voila, V O I L A, it's not voila, it's them saying voila, <laughs> dummy. And I said voila my whole life, but I never realized, oh, that's what voila is. It's voila, stupid. Voila is something that grows on your undersack. That's right. <laughs> or you see that new commercial out now. You may get some irritation in the perineum. Mm-hmm. And then they explain that's the area between the, the genitalia and and the butthole, and it's like, well, women don't really have, women don't have a perineum. It's your taint, or, like, or a taint. Yeah, it's a taint. There was actually a band in Denver called the Taints. Pretty good really, taints. but they taint. They were they taint not good. Or yeah, one of my uh, buddies. Uh, we had this long running fantasy football league. He's been taint for almost twenty five years now. Nice. Yep. My, my fantasy football team is the Kansas City Faggots. <laughs> oh, I, I, uh, it's a whole Blazing Saddles theme. He's one of them Kansas City Faggots. <laughs> I have a picture of uh, Slim Pickens on there half the time. Nice. Or nice. I have the Sheriff with Gene Wilder. Or I have yep. uh, that old football player from the Bears who played Mongo. The big guy that was in a little show called Webster. Oh. Well, anyways, you know what I'm talking about. That big yeah. football player from the Bears. Either way. Yep. Um, I guess the only thing else I got for you is, uh, can you name the uh, all six of the retired Vikings numbers and the player's name and the number? There's six of them. Six of them? Yeah. Okay, Fran Tarkenton. Yeah, that's the first one. Corey Stringer. Yep, he's on there, number 77. That's there. He told me there's going to be fucking trivia. Um, God, do we retire Randy Moss? Nope. We should have. You'd think they would by now. Irv Smith perineum, that thing. Painted it, if you know what I'm saying. (laughs) Right, right. No shit. Uh, Ron Yeri? Nope. All right, fuck it. I can't do it. Uh, Number 53, uh, Hilgenberg. Who? Wally Hilgenberg or Hilgenberger? Number 53. Never heard of him. Uh, Number 70, Jim Marshall. Okay. Which sucks because that's the year I was born, and I so I can never get a number seventy Vikings jersey now, unless it's True. a Marshall. Uh, then you got seventy seven Stringer. Yep. Thanks to him getting his head cooked, unfortunately. <sighs> that sucked. For those of you not you who are young and don't remember the, the the NFL football helmets, did not used to have like any ventilation in, in them at all, other than the ear holes. That was it. <laughs> so no air up there at all. These poor guys would go out and practice in ninety five degree weather with ninety five degree humidity. And just freaking cooked their brain. Well, poor Corey Stringer had a heat stroke and died. So he had to be the anyways, one. Hail, rest in peace to him and hail to him and his family and everything else. Uh, a drink then. Yeah, to Corey. Number number eighty, Chris Carter. Yeah, okay, I should have said that. And number eighty eight, and it's a weird number for somebody in his position, but Alan Page. Yep. There you yeah. go. There's the six. Judge. I memorized them when I thought I was going to be getting questions uh, <laughs> on your game, but but you, you you stuck me in what's his name with the you know, it was the last <laughs> two second round picks or whatever. I was like, damn, that's hard. Yeah, yeah, it's weird when you get put on the clock. It is. I had all the kickers, all the best kickers lined up, everywhere from uh, um, Mortensen or, or Gary Anderson, Morton Anderson, Joseph Paul Edinger. Yep, Joseph was on there. Blair Walsh, a guy named Ricardo. Oh yeah, was on there in the top ten. Kai Forbath, don't forget old Kai. Yep, yep. So I did the same thing wide receivers, but you guys had done that one. And then the running backs was everything from uh, Teddy Brown and Bob Bob Brown or Bill Brown, Chuck Foreman, obviously Randy Moss, and uh, Dalvin Cook was on the list. But either way, we'll, we'll uh, go into something else. Anything else you'd like to chat about? Anything else you uh, would like to share with our, our guests? Or uh... no, oh, you know what? something I need to tell in case anybody else doesn't know. Um, I overheard something about you guys are going to have a get together for the draft party, or not that I'm aware. Of. <laughs> not for the draft party. Oh, uh, but, well, you're doing something for the first draft day where everybody gets together and we get to meet you and razz you or something. The same way that uh, Purple Daily guys do it. 
All right, it's not gonna be undrafted. We are talking about doing a meetup at some point. Um, oh, okay. We, got, we definitely gotta do that. But I think one bar streaming it live. But uh, no, we actually have we have our buddies over on Saturday. We all sit and drink in one bar's garage. Oh, okay, um, okay. And watch the draft, and then um, I misunderstood. All right, we sneak no upstairs and do videos whenever something happens. And we make a selection, but yeah, that's cool, man. Right on. Yeah, we've been doing that for God. We've had some wild times, man. We should almost have me and one bar on just telling some of our draft day stories because it's been fucking crazy there you go do that at the end or 20 minutes before end or something oh man yeah we used to have some i mean it was back in the day like when uh you know when it was on thursday or when it was on saturday and the whole thing was you know saturday sunday we would have like people over and then we like give them names when that person was drafted they would get a prize <laughs> from their prize file and <laughs> this isn't always a good prize uh it was pretty damn funny so there's some good times back then right on well let's wrap it up then hey i sure appreciate you coming on my friend i really do appreciate it hell yeah man this is great this is a lot of fun and i'm glad we could finally find time that works it's a little more interesting than you thought it might have been no nah, this is great i the, your story about the christmas tree i'm gonna think about that for a long time there you go <laughs> yeah when in doubt don't fall backwards on your christmas tree if you've had seven or eight gin and tonics oh god ruined christmas <laughs> all righty well you guys Let's give a round of applause to Lupagus for being my first celebrity guest. And uh, you guys take care and uh, rock on. We'll see you guys Hell soon. Yeah. Take care. Boom.